unit cost. Right? Okay. Now you got part of it correct, especially the second part. What is the actual cost of the product? But for the first question here for target cost, since $3.60 is already the market demanding price, so first of all, you'd multiply that by the number of units. And then what you need to consider is the desired profit, which again is what you talked about, is the 4.8 million multiplied 10%. This is the profit, specifically this problem tells you how to calculate it, is 10% of assets. It could be other ways. It could be 10% of the sales price, 10% of assets. Depends on the problem. It will specifically tell you how to calculate a desired profit or directly give you the number. So the desired profit here is $480,000, but the current market price is $1,692,000. So you subtract that desired profit from the market price. Your cost, this is the target, your goal should be somewhere here in order to actually get this desired profit. Okay, so to get the target cost, you just need to compare what's the market price against your desired profit. So, the difference between the target cost and the target profit is just to switch around? Yes, it's just to switch around. So, it depends on which information you have first. Some problems will ask you what is the target profit. Some problem will ask you what is the target cost. You will have either one of the information to determine the other one. Okay. So once you get this, then it comes to what you calculated for the second question, what is the current cost that they're spending on producing these products? So the current cost, you have variable costs, you have fixed costs. If you add them together, this gives you 112, I don't know, you even know how to pronounce this, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 500. And all of these compared against the target costs, which we got in the first question, what does it tell you? This one, two, three, four thousand five hundred compared against the previous number. So you're able to, are they able to meet the profit or not? No, because they're spending more, right? And how much more? You can just subtract this number from this. This is the current cost that you're actually producing, using to produce these products. This is the goal that you're trying to meet. So right now, the current cost is too high. So companies can either try to cut down the fixed portion, try to cut down variable cost. If they don't want to go beyond the current market price, they need to some way try to cut down the cost in different areas. Okay. Now the third question, what was it? So the third question, we want to have a reduced variable cost and try to see if we're able to get actually meet the desired profit after cutting down some of the variable costs. Right, so since from the first two you already know the current cost is too high, it's above the target um, full cost, then for the third problem here, if we're able to reduce just the variable cost, assuming fixed cost is the same. So if we compare the reduced variable cost against the target, which is the goal of our cost in order to get profit, you realize that the new target full co fixed cost should be $648,000. So you can also not calculate the target fixed cost. You can also figure the whether the slower down variable cost actually meets desired profit if you just calculate overall what's the operating income you're getting. Okay, so this is one way or you can calculate the operating income and just compare against the target income. Either way, if your fixed cost here, new target fixed cost, is actually higher than the current fixed cost you're getting, then you know that if you reduce this variable cost, you're actually able to meet the target profit goal. Okay, so meaning that if we reduce the variable cost, that will be the new variable cost we're getting. Remember from the first question, we calculated our target cost. So then the target fixed cost should be 648000 It has to be somewhere below this in order to meet your profit goal. And then if you compare that against the current fixed cost you have, your current fixed cost is lower than the goal. So we're actually able to meet the profit goal if we actually reduce variable costs to this amount. So again, you can compare the fixed cost or you can just simply compare after reducing the cost what's the operating income you're getting. Compare that with the target income. Either way, this will tell you the same conclusion. 
So if you're actually getting the more target, more income than the target income, then you're actually able to get the desired profit. You will decide to choose, if possible, to lower down the variable cost to this level. Income for this one, you'll just be using, since the market price is the same, right? Because we already know it's competitive, so we need to accept this current revenue market price. And then the new variable cost you got from the third question here is using the 1.2, multiply all the units you have. So the same would be 564. Then you need to minus the current fixed cost that you have. So this is telling you that the fixed cost has to be somewhere below 648 in order to get to the desired profit. But if you subtract these two, the answer will be the operating, the income that you're actually getting after this. Okay, so to sum up this decision here, basically for price takers, price setters, depends on how unique your product is. Usually how you set the price, the strategies are different. This particular problem, if it tells you, for any problem, if it tells you the current market price and they have to accept it, that means they're more toward the price taker side. So it's more competitive in their industry. They can't really go too far away from the current market price, otherwise people may not be even purchasing their products. So they move backwards, they figure out the target price first, minus the desired profit to set the cost. So this question here, they're trying to rearrange the cost in order to meet the profit by reducing a portion of variable cost. So as opposed to that, if you're a price setter, you have actually innovative products, technology related, it's easier for you to actually have control over sales price because your product is special. It introduces some of the functions that other, your competitors does not have. Okay, let's move along to third and fourth decision makings, whether we decide to drop a product or not, and how do we mix the products in sales. So what are some of the things that will come to mind if you want to decide whether to drop a product in from your business or not? What is the main question there? Do you have a profit or not? And then since we learned about variable costs and fixed costs, so both of these needs to be considered. Remember sometimes, just like how we decide on special orders, if the fixed cost is the same, then really what matters